Hi everyone, it's Kilowatt here to read you some stories again. I'm really excited to be back here with you. And I have two stories this time all set up, plus a little activity in between. And I'm looking really forward to starting and, play and reading and playing with you today. I hope you're ready as well. So, let's get started, okay? <clears throat> My first book that I chose to read to you today is called On Earth. Ooh, I think like it's really important that we understand the earth that we live on, don't you? And how it supports us and all the fun little changes it has. So this book is going to like tell us about it in a fun little way. And it was written by a Brian Carras. So let's get started. On Earth, we go for a giant ride in space, spinning like a merry-go-round. Oh, that's cool, right? It's because we're like a circle in space, like a ball. See, this shows how we're spinning. We spin this way, and then we go around the sun, which is back here. The earth spins on an axis, so this part of the turning is the axis, and circles the sun in a great sweep. Whoosh. We face the sun, its light and warmth, as we live our days. Oh, look at that. Have you gone for a hike before? Or a wander in the woods or grasslands? Yeah, so much fun. Shadows get long as day rolls into night. See how long it gets? Isn't that fun? At night, we turn away from the sun and see a universe of stars and planets. So when you look up into the night sky, that's all the darkness that we see and then all the bright lights are other suns and planets. Isn't that cool? While we dream of what we can do tomorrow. Oh, I hope you all have fun plans for tomorrow. While we spin, we also travel in an orbit around the sun. So that by the time we get back to where we started, we're one year older. Wow. So every time you turn a year old means that you've been around the sun once. Isn't that cool? We count months as we grow. In 12 months, a year has gone by. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And see how the plant starts as just a little bitty branch and grows and grows and then sheds its leaves. Kind of like what's been happening here in Saskatoon. And now we have snow. Years go by day by day. We count them with calendars and candles. Blow those candles out. The earth tilts on its axis. When we lean toward the sun, we're warmer. When we lean away, we're colder. So right now here in Saskatoon, do you think we're leaning towards or away from the sun? If you said toward, away, you're right. That's why we're getting the snow and we have shorter days. So seasons in the Northern Hemisphere, that's where we're at. We're in the Northern Hemisphere. Our seasons change from summer to autumn and winter to spring. 
So right now we're in the change from summer to autumn and we're in almost at the autumn to winter part. But, so we are right here in the cycle right now. When the Earth's top side leans away from the sun, so that's that leaning away, there is winter above the equator and summer below. Isn't that cool? So when we're having winter here, people in Australia are having their summer. And when we're having our summer, they're having their winter. Isn't that neat? In winter, the days get shorter and the lights are longer and the nights are longer. Yeah, that's kind of happening right now, isn't it? Before you had lots of light when you got home from school and now not so much. By spring, the days get filled with sunlight. Oh, yeah. We all like that time. We spin and we circle, rotate and revolve. Gravity holds us to the earth. Oh, see, otherwise we would float away. So it's a good thing it holds us to the earth. Let's just do fun things. Gently, slowly, around and around, we hold out our arms as we glide through the universe. So we're just one little speck in the universe but there's a lot of us on that spec. Pretty cool. We fly through space as night becomes day, summer becomes winter, and years go by. So where do you think we are in here? So here's the sun. And then we are the third planet away from the sun. So that's one, two, three. So we're right there. So the earth in its complexities, in all its differences, is really awesome and unique as it holds us humans and many other living organisms. And the reason we're able to survive and stuff is because of all these different cycles the earth goes through. And these are the cycles. So we have the earth is like a ball and is a sphere. Yeah. There is an imaginary line around the center of the earth, which is the equator. So right in the middle, kind of like the earth is wearing a belt. <clears throat> the earth then spins like a top. So if you ever have a top, you twirl it and it spins. And it's not exactly like up and down, it tilts a bit. And that's how the earth works too. It rotates around an imaginary line that goes from the top of the Earth axis to the bottom. The Earth revolves around the Sun in a big orbit. So that's like, here's the Earth. Here, I mean, sorry, here's the Earth. Here's the Sun. And it orbits around. And that's what, so... The spinning is what gives us night and day. The orbiting around is what gives us our different seasons. There are imaginary points on the Earth's top and bottom, the North Pole and the South Pole. So the North Pole and the South Pole. And that's, if you're looking to use a compass, we are able to use the North Pole, magnetic North Pole, to help us figure out which directions we should travel on. So, if you're ever curious, you should talk to your adults and see if they can show you how to use a compass and then you can see which way is north from where you are. And then we have gravity and that's what keeps us on the planet so that we can touch the soil and walk, run and wheel and do all the fun things. Gravity is the force and that holds us on earth. So thank you for joining me for this book. Now, if you give me a second, 
what I'll do is I'll quickly set up a little activity for us to do. We're going to be like the trees that were in the book and grow. So one minute. Hey everyone. Okay, I want you to run and go get a blanket or a towel and then I'll wait for you to come back and get it. Welcome back. Okay, so you're probably wondering what we're going to do with that blanket and towel. Well, like in the story that we just read where the plants grow during the different seasons, uh, we're going to pretend that we're that plant and we're going to use our blanket to start us off as soil, okay? Because we're going to be a seedling and we're going to go through all the different stages. So I want you to take your blanket and I want you to, to throw it over yourself and crouch down as if you're a seedling that just got planted. And it's springtime and the rains come and then you start sprouting out, sprouting out, move on up, move on out, shake that blanket off. And now we're in the summer and we're a plant and we're moving in the breeze and all around. Are you moving? Yeah, it can get windy. Maybe it's not so windy and we were just like, woohoo, and pose and freeze and, and pose and freeze. Okay. And then it's fall, fall comes and we want to fall. We want the leaves and our like petals to fall to the ground. So fall with me. Okay. And fall. And fall. And then after it's all fall, the plants, they either die and, or they go into dormancy stage, like our big trees outside right now. So to do that, to, we're going to hold really still and lay down and breathe and go one, two, three, and breathe out one two three and then we're going to jump back up and shake it all out so we're ready for the next story okay are we ready for our second story now that you've had a chance to wiggle and jiggle like a tree i think it's so wonderful to be a tree trees are amazing they soak up our CO2 and help us fight climate change, which is what this next book I'm going to read to you is about. So the book I'm going to read to you now is called Winston of Churchill, and it's One Bear's Battle Against Global Warming. And it's written by Jean Davis Okimoto and illustrated by Jeremiah Tremel. Polar bear with glasses, is that cute? So, just so you know, Churchill is in Manitoba, which is next door to us here in Saskatchewan. And it's located right on the shores of the Hudson Bay. And that's where this story is taking place. So it's right close to us. And this is Winston. Winston of Churchill was a great white bear. Every year in the late fall and early winter, Winston and the other polar bears came to hunt from the ice of Hudson Bay near the town of Churchill in the province of Manitoba. Winston was a fierce, brave bear and when Winston spoke, every bear listened. Young and old bears, father bears, mother bears, teenage bears, all the bears listened, even cubs. Every furry face was turned to Winston and a hush fell over the crowd. Oh. 
My fellow creatures, I have called this meeting today to discuss a serious problem. The ice is melting. We are losing our home. The time has come for action. This is no time for ease and comfort. It is the time to dare and endure. Ooh. They look pretty excited about taking on that challenge though. I think we are, can handle it too. And there he is, Winston, talking to all the bears still about this problem. He asks, do we want to spend the rest of our lives at the dump? No, no, shout the bears. We want ice. Ice is nice. We will fight for the ice, boomed Winston. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight on the hills. We shall never surrender. All the bears cheered and cheered. Yeah. In the back row, a cub raised his paw. Yes, son, Winston called on him. We don't live on an island. We live in Manitoba. I know that. It was just a figure of speech, said Winston. Winston noticed the cub raising his paw again. Now what? I have another question, says the cub. What is it? Winston puffed his cigar. Who are we fighting? That's a good question. I was about to get to that sun. Winston puffed again on his car. Ice is melting because it's getting too warm around here. And people are doing it with their cars and smokestacks and cutting down trees. How does that happen? Asked the cub. I wrote this book about it. There's one for everybody. Come up here and help me pass them out. Ooh, see, books are so educational. I love reading books. Oh, look at the book he's handing out. Isn't that cool? It's kind of like this one. The book it says is, why is it getting hotter? By Winston of Churchill, Manitoba, Canada, North America, Earth. And it goes on to tell us what's in the book that Winston was sharing. So let's read it. The Earth has some gas around it that holds in the heat of the sun. It's called the atmosphere. If you get too much of some of these gases, the heats near the earth get stuck and the earth heats up. Burning gasoline in cars makes carbon dioxide. Methane gas comes from rotting garbage in landfills. Digging for oil and natural gas and mining coal lets out a gas called nitrous oxide too much of these gases is no good. No, some is okay, but too much is bad. But green plants turn carbon dioxide into oxygen, which is very good. People need to burn less gas, make less garbage, and plant more trees. There are so many things that we can do. But what can we do? asks the bears. We can't do anything, Winston said. We are bears. We don't drive cars or burn coal. We like it cold. Yes, ice is nice, everyone agreed. It's the people who have to change, shouted Winston. Not bears, and we must convince them to do it. Yeah, it's not the bears causing the problems. It's people, like us. And it's not that we're trying to be doing it deliberately or bad. It's just we don't always take into consideration our impacts on the environment and the animals around us. So we need to start doing that. Winston brings up a good point. Now listen carefully, here's my plan. Tomorrow when the tourists board the tundra buggies and those buggies begin to roll, they'll roll right into our polar bear protests. Are you with me? Are you ready to march? Yes, shouted the bears. Are you ready to fight for the ice? Yes, shouted the bears. Cool, they're getting ready. 
So protesting is a really cool way to bring attention and education awareness to issues. So it's really cool that they're taking and doing a protest. <coughs> but one bear didn't say yes. One bear said no. Everyone looked to see who it was. Yeah, who is this bear that says no? Why would he want to say no? There's the bear that said no. The bear who said it, uh, no, said it again. No. It was Winston's wife. Oh, Winston's wife doesn't agree with him. Why do you think that is? I guess we'll find out. Winston and his wife left the group to have a private talk. Yeah, when you're having a difference of opinion, it's always good not to do it in front of a lot of other people. It's better to have a private conversation. This is very embarrassing, Winston said to his wife. Why did you say no? I'm not going on the march, Winston, unless you quit smoking that thing. You're polluting the air and that makes it hotter here. That thing in your mouth is an instrument of pollution. She makes a good point. Sometimes a cigar is a scar, growled Winston. How can you convince people to stop doing what they're doing unless you can show that every little bit helps? His wife glared at him. No cigar or I'm not going. Ooh. So Winston's looking at his cigar. Maybe a cigar isn't just a cigar. What do you think he'll do? The next morning it was cold and clear and in the town of Churchill, the tourists began to wake up. Oh, isn't it pretty? Have you ever been to Churchill? If you have, it's really awesome. Here it's a beautiful place. I haven't been yet, but I want to go. They ate breakfast. The tourists ate breakfast in the restaurants of the town. Then it was time to go. Time to go see the bears. The tourists were very excited as they boarded the tundra buggies. So this is a tundra buggy. It looks like a bus, but on like lifted wheels. So it can get over the big ice and not get stuck in all the deep snow. There were people from Billings, Montana, Tacoma, Washington, Portland, Oregon, and Br Brunswick, Maine. There were people from Evanston, Illinois, Hudson, Ohio, Boise, Idaho, and Halifax, Nova Scotia. There was even a family from Tokyo, Japan, three couples from Auckland, New Zealand, and a man from San Diego, California, and two Welsh ladies who lived in a place called Bernifrid. I don't know if I pronounced that right. I'm sorry if I did it. Landarog, that no one could pronounce. Okay, so I'm not the only one who has pronunciation issues, but that's it's still important to try and learn how to pronounce things properly because Proper pronunciation of everything is important and shows a sign of respect. So I'm going to learn how to pronounce that in the future. Look at all these people from all over the world going to go see the polar bears. They drove and drove, but there was not a bear in sight. Where are the bears? The tourists kept staring out the window at the tundra looking for the bears, but the only thing they saw was tundra. The tourists were very disappointed. They began to grumble and complain. One man from Boys wanted his money back. So did a lady from Billings. But that's the thing, is when we go out to try and see wildlife, it's not always going to be there for us. So that's something to understand when we go out. Wildlife isn't just there for to look for us to look at to make it seem like it's pretty. It's there for a purpose. 
Their complaints got louder and louder, then suddenly far out on the tundra, there was an amazing sight. <gasps> Look at the bears have signs and are in the line. And that's kind of what a protest is about. You always want peaceful protests where you're sharing information and bringing awareness, no violence. Every bear in Churchill was marching across the tundra. They were following a fierce, brave bear. Look at them. Isn't that cool? Look at all the different signs. There's like, freeze, please. Save trees, cool it. Ah, oh, so many cool signs. But the most important sign, as you'll notice, is the save our home because they have nowhere else to go. And the fierce brave bear they were following was chewing a twig. Look at that twig. Why do you think that's the case that you're chewing a twig? Save our home, it's up to you. We can all do our part, shouted Winston of Churchill. No matter how small, I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears, and sweat. But I say to you, never, never, never give up. Oh, that's I agree, we should probably never give up, hey? Look at him standing in front of everyone with his twig. Why do you think he has that twig in his mouth? Do you think it's because he replaced his cigar? I think so. And that's also probably why his wife showed up. Look at the tourists are paying attention. The tourists were so excited to see the bears, they took picture after picture. And then they got home, they showed their pictures to friends and family. Yeah, look at all the cool pictures that they took. Winston and all the other polar bears and the really cool signs that say, we must all do our part no matter how small. In every picture was a fierce, brave bear holding a sign that said, we must all do our part no matter how small. And the bear was chewing a twig because because that was the little part that Winston could do was switch out his cigar to chew a twig. So no matter how small, it's important. And that's the end of the story. But there is some information at the back of this book about the plate of the polar bears and where Winston got his name. So let's just see what it has to say. Because the earth is getting warmer, the ice in Hudson Bay breaks up earlier, and the polar bears don't have as much time to hunt for their food. The bears have become thinner, and female bears are having fewer cubs, some of which don't survive. Polar bears typically swim from one patch of sea ice to another to hunt for food, but as the melting ice makes the distances between the patches greater, the bears must swim further and further. This is very hard on them, and scientists have said that some of the bears have actually drowned. That's pretty sad. Winston the polar bear is named for a real person, one of the greatest leaders in history, Sir Winston Churchill. He was the courageous prime minister of England during World War II, and his words inspired the people to never give up in the war. He was the prime minister from 1940 until 1945. When Winston the polar bear is trying to lead the bears to protest global warming, he uses some of the famous words of Sir Winston Churchill. <clears throat> Sir Winston Churchill was often seen with a cigar in his mouth, Back then, people didn't know the dangers of smoking, and with his hand raised high with two fingers, making a V for victory. Ooh. Sign, a sight that cheered the people and gave them hope. In addition to being a great leader, Sir Winston Churchill was also a painter and an author, and in 1953, he won the Nobel Prize in literature. Oh, this is really interesting information. In this story, Winston the polar bear is an author too. 
his book, Why It's Getting Hotter, is based on a real book called Why Are the Ice Caps Melting? The Dangers of Global Warming by Anne Rockwell, is illustrated by Paul Maisel. It is part of the Let's Read and Find Out Science series. This book gives many details about global warming and would be a very good one to read to learn more than the simple few facts Winston and the polar bear things Winston the bear wrote in his book. But even though Winston's book only has a few facts, Winston the polar bear has an idea that he hopes might save the home for the polar bears and help all the creatures of the earth. Everyone must do their part, no matter how small. So that's it. So I ask you, what small part can you do? I know that I will try to drive less or make sure that there's more of us sharing a vehicle to help reduce that gas consumption. What do you think you can do? I hope you think about it. And I would love to hear your ideas. So make sure to post them in the comments section and I'll make sure to look and respond. Okay, thanks for spending this time with me and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Okay, bye.